guys, and welcome to another Supreme Ruler Ultimate Guide. Today, I'm going to be talking about diplomacy, the basics of it. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using the standard, original diplomacy system from the Supreme Ruler series, as opposed to the sphere based system which they introduced in Supreme Ruler Cold War. The diplomacy in the sphere system works pretty much the same with some slight quirks and it has some unique mechanics. I figure I'd make another guide about the sphere diplomacy later on. This guide is going to be primarily mechanical and for this purpose I have loaded up into the Cold War, ironically, as China. So the first thing that I need to teach you is the state tab. It's right here, it is the second tab from the left. This is your primary diplomatic UI element that you will be seeing. It has some non-related information as well, but one of the first things you'll see is what country you're looking at, which you can change by clicking on any country. You'll see what their government type is, which is important. Certain government types get along with other government types better. For example, monarchies and democracies get along pretty well. Communism and dictatorships get along pretty well. Government also has a lot of other modifiers in the game, but for diplomacy, it's bare minimum. It's just if you have this matchup, they'll get along a little bit better. And government types of a feather, of course, get along better as well. Communists will like each other better. Democracies will like each other better. It's not just one compared to another. Also, they like each other within themselves better as well. There's actually a diplomacy bar, but the main thing that it represents is your treaty integrity, which is also seeable down here and your world market opinion. Treaty integrity is just a representation of how well do you keep to your treaties. The higher it gets, the slower it increases, and the higher it is, the more it decreases when you break treaties. If it gets low enough, then other nations will not be willing to make deals with you diplomatic of really any kind. To get it to go up, you just have to wait and not break treaties. To get it to go down, well, for example, declare war on someone, that's pretty easy, because that will break your ceasefire or peace agreement, as well as any other treaties you might have with them. For example, if I, China, attacks North Korea right now, you could see I have embassy, free trade, line of sight. It would break all three of those and a hidden ceasefire treaty as well, and these would impact my treaty integrity and my world market opinion. The world market opinion is essentially like the UN or the League of Nations in the World War I scenario. It's how the world sees you and your reliability among the world. The higher it gets, the more the world likes you and that comes with benefits such as world market subsidy rate which I'll explain in a minute. As it goes down, it hurts that rating as well. And the primary thing that it really affects is if it gets to outrage and in a certain threshold within outrage, you will actually have the world market aka the automated market system where you buy and sell goods that you're probably relying on unless you're playing on a really slow speed and micromanaging all your resources will kick you off. You will not be able to trade there anymore. So if you need goods, you'd have to go buy them manually from countries that like you. If you have an excess of goods, you'd have to tone it down or sell them manually to countries that are willing to deal with you. As for that world market subsidy rate, it's not really that important. It's just the UN essentially subsidizing you. You must be in the UN essentially. That's being a part of the world market. That's the way it works. And what they do is they actually take a membership like tax. You have to pay for your membership with the UN. And this scales with your GDP as many things do in this game. And the higher the subsidy rate, the more the world market essentially says you don't have to pay. If it's 100%, I don't believe you have to pay any subsidy rate at all but good luck getting it to 100%. If you're a poorer nation, it will go up faster. If you're a friendly nation, it will go up faster. If you're a richer nation, it will go up slower. If you go to wars and do bad things a lot, it will go up slower. And every time you do something bad, it actually goes down. And the degree of which all these things are affected by warmongering and etc. is determined by whether or not you have critical international opinion on. That is a setting that you can set while making a game. And if you haven't seen my game settings tutorial, it's in the playlist that is linked in the cards. I describe how to set up a game and what all the settings and modifiers and etc. do. But now we're gonna go look at the diplomatic screen, let's call it. And there's two ways to get to this. So the first way is to select whatever country by clicking on it that you want to interact with. For example, I'm looking at Papa Stalin here, USSR, Putin's idol. We would like to negotiate with him. 
So there's this little button right here, second button down on the state tab. We're gonna click that and that's gonna open up our diplomatic exchange menu. And this is where a lot of diplomacy happens. The second way to open up the diplomatic menu, by the way, with someone is to simply right click their nation and go to diplomatic offer. As you can see, we have an interesting set of treaties here. It's not actually equal. There is an active air transit, embassy, and free trade agreement here. And you can see that on his side as well, but you can see that the air transit, only one of us actually has it. So this is a thing that can happen. Basically, when you want to make a treaty with somebody, you pick it. For example, free flow of labor force, and you see we offer and request it. If they accept it, they accept it. If they don't, they don't. If it's yellow right now, it's actually color coded. Green means they'll accept it. Red means they won't. And yellow means they're going to give you a counter offer or you need to add more to the deal to sweeten it. Then you get the result that you get. But there's also one way. For example, I can request free flow of labor force, but not give it to them. I would need to give them something else then in order to get that. Well, that's what happened in this instance. And this is more historical. China has given the USSR, that's why it's on our side, we gave it to them, air transit. So they can fly over our territory, but as you see, theirs is yellow, and it doesn't have a cancel. We cannot fly over there. So that's another thing that happens here. Making treaties is pretty simple. If you want one, the simplest thing to do is just add it, and then, you know, they start adding up. If you ever want to clear it, you just hit this button, clear offer, if to do it on both sides. If you want a one-sided deal be it a treaty or if you want to get money or technology or whatever then what you would do is get rid of this one from your side for example and you hit none or you could do that on their side as well like no i don't want anything in exchange for what i'm asking for you could do that over here too so i can give them free flow of labor force and not request anything back and you see they love that so that's a way you can especially have better deals with players like one-sided agreements the ai doesn't usually like one-sided agreements unless it's in their favor so but there's a lot of things here and what the hell do they mean and i will tell you these descriptions of what they mean are not helpful for example criminal extradition grants extradition right of wanted criminals well what the hell is that this game doesn't have criminals this game doesn't simulate extradition what the fuck does that mean Free flow of labor force allows workers to cross borders. This will help equalize prosperity between the regions. What the hell does that mean? This game doesn't simulate workers like that. How the fuck does that work? Free trade, allow free flow of goods across the border. Help equalize prosperity between regions. How are the goods getting across the borders anyway? There's no tax on imports and exports in this game. So what the fuck does this mean? Well, you don't need to trust any of these tooltips because while some of them are correct, like this one, free passage of land, sea, and air units through a region. Some of them are also just completely fucking wrong, like criminal extradition and free flow of labor force. So I'm gonna go through them one by one with you so that you can understand them. Because this is how you become friends with someone, by going through these treaties. So let's find someone that we don't have treaties with. For example, Japan, they fucking hate us. We have nothing with them. Technically, we have one thing, it is a ceasefire. Like I said, that is hidden. If you are not at war, you have a ceasefire with somebody, and that is a hidden treaty that you can break. Um, so when we're gonna go to somebody to try to get some treaties with them, we have to take some things into account first off. We have to take into account our treaty integrity. If it's too low, they just won't accept anything. We have to take into account our relationship here. You see, Japan feels diplomatically outraged towards me. So they're not really gonna accept anything that I offer them. And their civilians feel concerned towards me. You see on the bar, you could probably generally get the fuller the bar, the better, the lower the bar, the worse. It's even color-coded. Casus belly doesn't really matter for these treaties, and this is just another representation of this bar, specifically the government diplomatic rating. This up here, neutral, which you can also see down here, actually, on the state tab, shows if we're neutral, if we're allied, if we're at war as well. When making trades, we have some little controls here, for example, trade controls. If we click this, which is currently enabled by default, we can ignore any military unit offers from the region. If it's a check mark, then we will accept their capability to offer me military units for sale. It's rare that the player gets this, but usually if you're weaker, they might. Depends on the setting as well. And then economic offers as well. So this is to say, hey, I don't want you trying to sell me any resources. 
that would pop up in your diplomatic screen up here. And then there's a final one, which is auto accept future balance or better commodity and money offers. You turn this on and basically if it's a decent or better deal, then your AI will automatically say, oh yes, you want to sell me agriculture for a decent price? Okay, automatically accept it. And you can see that it's being accepted here. You just won't get prompted to accept it yourself. This is actually automatically enabled by default with your colonies and you can disable it and enable it for anybody else as well. When you send somebody an offer, you can send them an expiration date as well, seven, 15, 30 days to give somebody more time to think about it. I think usually the AI just automatically defaults it to like 30 days. Players usually just do seven days because you're gonna get a response in that time anyway. The AI isn't gonna slack. Other players might slack, so you might wanna be careful doing that with other players. And there's more trade controls, but not on this screen. So now that we know how to do a trade and what the controls are and what we need to look for when it comes to actually making deals, let's try to find someone actually that will accept a deal. For example, we can see Yugoslavia is like max friendly to us. They don't have full bars, but they fucking love us. So we already have an embassy with them, which says general recognition of other region sovereignty aids communication. That is not what this does. This is literally just a increases relations treaty. This just helps your relations. That is all it does. And we have free trade with them, which actually does have effects. And it's not what it says here. Free trade actually, like embassy, increases the relationship between you and the nation that you sign it with. It also provides a very minor bonus to your GDP, like a little hidden modifier that pumps up your GDP a little bit. It's so very insignificant that it barely matters. And if you actually need to improve your economy, this is not the way to do it. And the other thing it does is increase your UN rating. It actually makes the world market like you a little little bit better emphasis on a little so if you're trying to recover your world market opinion and you're tired of waiting just go make free trade with everybody there's some other ones we can get so the two i just read to you are known as as i call them the friendship treaties they're good starting treaties for making friends with somebody especially in the base diplomatic system not as much in the cold war scenario the other ones are criminal extradition here let me just cue these up so you guys can see them better criminal extradition and free flow of labor force. These are the four friendship treaties. Usually you start out with embassy no matter what, so we could just take that out. Free trade we actually have, so we could take that out. Now let's discuss these other ones, which as you see, they will take. Free flow of labor force here. So like it says, allow workers cross the border. That's not actually what it does. Free flow of labor force only does one thing. It's that minor economic benefit part of free trade. It does this as well. And yes, it does stack, but of course it's still insignificant and you won't really notice a difference. This is all it does. That is all this does. There's no negative downside to it whatsoever unless your economy is growing too rapidly and you actually need to get your inflation down. Insignificant as it may be, you may not want to go around making free trade and free flow of labor force agreements. And then finally, we have the criminal extradition. Grant extradition right of wanted criminals. Yeah, it doesn't do that. All this does is the same as an embassy does. It just makes the other nation like you a little bit more and help your relations in the future. That's, as you see, why I call these four the friendship treaties, because they exist to make another country like you or give you minor benefits. So we're gonna go ahead and get these treaties, the two friendship treaties we're missing with Yugoslavia. So we're gonna go and we're gonna send that over. Now we're gonna put it on fastest and we're gonna wait to see when they accept it and they have accepted it, perfect. Now I can pause it again. Go back into the diplomatic screen and you see we have all these treaties both ways. Very simple, nice to look at. Now we have more treaties. We're getting past the friendship treaties now. Now we're getting into treaties that have mechanics behind them. For example, line of sight treaty. The line of sight treaty uh, is pretty obvious. It allows you to see if line of sight is enabled into someone else's region, as well as see whatever their military units and their fabrications and anything can see. So if I go ahead and offer that, and then we unpause, we can now see, you see all it light up like a Christmas tree. See how we can't see into Romania, really? It's dark and we can't really see anything. Yugoslavia, we can see into now. We can see their units, we can see everything that they can see. If they were to invade somebody, we would be able to see the invasion. If they were to get satellites for recon, we would be able to see through those. If they were to place spies, we would be able to see what the spies can see. Now, with AI, it doesn't actually matter that much. If you can get it, it's like, might as well get it. Because even if they can see into your land, it doesn't fucking matter. 
they're not going to take advantage of it. You can't be at war with somebody and have line of sight with them. So they're not going to take advantage of it. And the AI doesn't know how to stage for attacks. There is zero downside to making this treaty with an AI other than that if you attack them, that is one more treaty you have to break in order to go to war with them. And that is more penalty to your treaty integrity and your world market opinion. By the way, if you click on another nation, you can see their information here as well under diplomacy and the treaty integrity thing, all that stuff. Next, let's take a look at the transit treaties. We have air transit, sea transit, and land transit. You notice land and sea also have and supply on them. That's pretty important. So air transit just means that you can fly over somebody's territory and also land at their air bases. It is a little misleading that it doesn't say and supply, but land transit and supply is of course, you can move your land units to their territory and use their supplies in your region. If you also have this, then their supply will spill over into your land territory if you have a land connected border. And then there's sea transit and supply, which allows your ships to go through their waters without being shot. There's ways around that technically. And supply, which allows you to refuel and resupply in their region as well. Finally, there's the full transit treaty, which is literally just all three of these combined. So the, where this is useful is if someone likes you enough that they'll just give you all three, you'll see the other ones have actually disappeared here because they've all been combined into this. If they don't like you enough, one way you could try to edge it closer is by going for one transit at a time, which as you see here, we actually have worse results when we go for just one of these. So, you know, let's go ahead and get full transit on pause. They should accept that pretty quickly. Yep, there you go. I and mean, we now have full transit with them. That was pretty easy. So we can now go through them as if they were our own country. We cannot like build there or anything, but with their infrastructure and their land, we can now traverse it. We are going through these treaties pretty quickly. The next one up, and I'm going in order of like difficulty to acquire, by the way, would be non-aggression pack, assurance to not attack a region. So yeah, I guess that's a way to describe it. This doesn't actually make it so that a country won't attack you and it doesn't stop you from attacking them. Let's go ahead and get that with them. What it actually does is it amplifies the penalties for breaking treaties. For example, to your world market opinion, to the way other nations view you and etc. It takes those and it cranks it up to 11. This is what you get with someone, namely a player, but you could try it with AI as well if you want them to suffer diplomatically for attacking you. If you want to attack somebody, you do not want non-aggression pact unless you are willing to eat the penalties and they are severe penalties. Then we have the defense treaty. So this gets a little more complicated. Let's start with the simpler one, mutual defense. It says guaranteed defensive help in time of war. So no, that's not really what that means. What it actually means is that if someone is declared war on, there is a chance, I notice this also depends on the setting, there's a chance that your mutual defense will activate and they will call you into the war. And if they do this, you're kind of obliged to help them. And if you don't, you take a massive diplomatic penalty. And by help them, I mean flat out declare war on their aggressor. This penalty actually only exists from what I've seen in the critical international opinion mode. If you turn that off, then this penalty isn't actually there whether they call you or not. The AI almost never declare war on an ally's attacker anyway, so for the sake of the AI, it's probably better to play with that off anyway. Another thing this allows is proxy war. So if you have mutual defense with somebody, or they have it with you, then the person that has the mutual defense with the other person can go into the other person's territory. For example, let's say Yugoslavia is at war with Romania. I could send troops to Yugoslavia if they've given me mutual defense and actually fight Romania through their territory without being at war with Romania and help Yugoslavia win. I will not take anything. I'm just helping them. Think any Cold War scenario where someone came to assist somebody. For example, the Korean War, the UN task force that showed up help South Korea against North Korea and China end up joining North Korea. China and the UN didn't take any territory on this front, but they helped. That's what it is. It's there to be able to simulate proxy war fighting. But if I give them mutual defense and they don't give it to me, they'd be able to do that on my territory, but I wouldn't be able to do it on theirs. And so it works both ways. It also means 
that if someone declares war on someone and I have mutual defense with them, I get a gigantic bonus to my war justification, or as this menu calls it, Casas Belly, to be able to attack them and get away with it. And just in case you don't know, Casas Belly, or war justification, is how right you are in declaring war. If it's at 100, there are really no penalties to attacking somebody. If it's lower, then you will take penalties to your, like I said, treaty integrity and your world market opinion and the way other nations view you or attacking that nation. And we'll talk more about that later. We still have a little bit more to go here with Yugoslavia. So let's go ahead and get that mutual defense. And then we have missile defense. So this is a treaty that they've actually changed throughout the game. So I don't fully know what to say about it. It says provide ICBM missile defense coverage where available. In Supreme Ruler Cold War, they changed it from basically letting you actively shoot down missiles to literally just being a diplomatic buff, like the criminal extradition. I don't fully know the status of it in this game, and there's no information. I feel like I've seen it work. The thing is, the only thing this would really work with if it has a mechanic is the missile defense satellites, and if your game goes on long enough to get these, that's already impressive. Because these are so late modern day, most players will never even see these used. It is very, very helpful when you're trying to get an alliance with somebody though, and getting to the formal alliance, you see offers an alliance includes travel, supply, non-aggression, line of sight agreements, that is accurate. So what this actually is, is it's an official treaty that everybody in the world can see that basically announces that this person can go through my territory and I can go through theirs. We both have non-aggression with each other, so we will not attack each other. And we can both see into each other's territory and it's actually leaving something out here. We both also have mutual defense that is included. So for example, if I show you on a country that I don't already have treaties with, take a look at the transit treaties, keep an eye on mutual defense, non-aggression, and line of sight. As you see, they have all disappeared except for mutual defense itself. Now, Formal Alliance still does have a mutual defense mechanic. The reason why this one did not disappear is because this specifically is what enables proxy wars. You do get all the other benefits of mutual defense when you have an alliance, but mutual defense is what you need for the proxy war capability, I believe. Formal Alliance is the hardest treaty to get, and so it is usually the last one you will get. And when it comes to actually getting treaties with a country with this Diplo system instead of spheres, the way I'd recommend doing it is Embassy, Free Trade, Criminal Extradition, Free Flow of Labor Force. Get those four first. Once you have those, you want to aim for getting the full transit, the line of sight, and the non-aggression. That's the next tier. And finally, you don't actually want to get missile or mutual defense if you're going for an alliance until you can get the alliance. And by what I mean by that is if you go to offer formal alliance, mutual, and missile, Look, they'll actually take that with me. But notice, they won't take formal alliance. The AI really, really likes things being bundled together. And Battlegoat has patched out the ability to just pay somebody for an alliance. So what you want to do is you actually want to save these two. That's a personal strategy for getting the formal alliance. Because if you have those two and then you try to offer formal alliance, it's actually much, much harder to get the formal alliance than if you just offered mutual and missile defense along with it. Only one of these will help, but both of these I found is the best way to do it. In my like thousand hours or whatever of playing this game, the strategy that I just told you is the easiest way I have found to get treaties if you're going in order. Some nations will like you so much off the bat, you won't even need to strategize getting anything with them. Some nations will like you just enough that you'll need to use that strategy to get everything with them. And some nations will hate you so much, you're gonna need to do some extra work to actually get treaties with them. And so now I'll talk about the other diplomatic exchanges that you can do, along with how to improve your relationship with the nation outside of this treaty menu. So the first and easiest way to make somebody like you is to go over here on the state screen, third button down, to influence relations, where you could see some buttons we've already seen before on the trade screen. It's actually one more here. Break all treaties with this nation pretty much explains itself. You hardly ever want to do this, but you can also do this in the diplomatic menu. Although to do it, you'd have to go here to existing agreements. And this shows all the agreements you have so far. And you press this little button right here, break all ties with region. And that does the same thing. Anyway, while we're on the influence relations tab, there's two little buttons here under government. There is support ruling party and there is support opposition. So if you support the ruling party, you will essentially give them money and they will start liking you. 
To be completely transparent, this isn't really a special mechanic. This is equivalent to whatever amount of money that it subtracts from your treasury each day. This is literally as if every day you just did a transaction through the diplomatic menu to give them that money, which if you wanted to do, you go back to here. The third button is resources and you go to financial and you can give them money or any other resources you want. This is another way to make, make somebody like you. Just throw obscene amounts of money at them or resources through this screen. Uh, you could do it as a lump sum. You can change it. But be careful working with anything other than a lump sum because it is very fucking misleading. For example, this says per payment, 11 billion. But up here it says I'm only offering a total of like 1.6 billion. Well, this is because Battlegoat, for whatever reason, doesn't know how to word things. No offense, Battlegoat. When you select anything other than lump sum, the top amount is the amount you will be sending per day. The per payment amount is the amount that will be included in the entire agreement. Whereas in lump sum, it just the per payment and the amount match because that's all you're doing. So don't fall for that. That's very terribly worded. I hate that it's like this. It's very misleading, especially because the value changes to daily. So they really, really make it sound like you're sending, you know, a hundred billion every fucking day, but you're not. Anyway, for the amount you send, it's actually a little bit of a mystery before you do it. And you might say, but Rez, look, it says support ruling party 1.25 M daily. So that would be a million and a quarter daily right that's how much i would send them right no this number is complete bullshit and this automatic formal alliance cost means nothing if you've ever seen amount under that ignore it it doesn't mean anything it doesn't do anything and this number under support ruling party is wrong i don't even know why they put a number there because it's wrong the only way to find out how much money you are spending on government support is to actually go up to the cabinet the first button under the state tab and you'll see government support here it starts on the middle this is the recommended you double click to get to the recommended so for example if i double click over here go back to the middle you could double it you can like turn it off completely or lower it and your progress with supporting will actually scale based on how much you spend the reason that these numbers here are problematic by the way because there's a lot of things that scale numbers in this game a lot of modifiers once those modifiers are taking effect, the numbers become inaccurate, but for some reason they keep displaying the base numbers. I don't know why, don't ask me. The next button, support opposition, which you can see is cheaper. It's bigger or lower based on the size of the economy and country that you are trying to interact with here. Supporting opposition, rather than making somebody like you and throwing your money into their treasury, is a little different. So what it does instead is it makes them hate you and makes you hate them. And it generates Casas Belly for both of you. War justification so that if you went to severe action and you looked at your war justification, I don't know why they say war justification on one menu and Casas Belly on another. Holy shit, this tutorial is making me realize how inconsistent this game is. But they will both start going up faster if you spend more money on not government support but fund insurgency which is really fucking confusing and you'll see why in a moment but the more you spend here the faster it will go the less you spend the slower it will go and double click to get it into the recommended in the middle even if both countries are opposing this typically caps out at 70 percent the only way to get it above 70 percent is to have other modifiers happening like they have to be declaring war or doing other things to give other countries war justification towards them or you need to have your world volatility set high enough that it kind of just gives everyone justification to encourage wars and to learn how to do that again reference my game settings tutorial next we have fund insurgency so this is another big one for wars it's also kind of involved in diplomacy i'll explain it just because it ties in with fund insurgency which i just explained as being support opposition so wait why is it here because for whatever reason battlegoat decided to combine the spending of support opposition not with support ruling party the government support or to make it its own but instead combine it with the fund insurgency which you see there's low funding high funding and then provide modern equipment so funding insurgency actually lowers someone's military approval rating the support opposition actually does lower their domestic approval rating and support government actually helps their domestic approval rating but the fund insurgency lowers the military one and you can choose i want low funding and it gives you an amount which is wrong or you can choose high funding and it gives you an amount which is wrong and then on top of either one of these, you can tack on provide modern equipment for an extra bonus to that debuff 
and it gives you an amount which is wrong. And both this fund insurgency and opposed government goes into fund insurgency, so you cannot change their funding separately. You must do them as one bar for some godforsaken reason. The only other thing on this menu is this little military thing to tell units, hey, path around this country, don't ever go through it, or declare war immediately on an incursion. So basically, if this country flies over me and attacks me and incurs on my territory or tries to sail through my naval waters, then immediately declare war because fuck them. There's actually a mechanic for that. If somebody is mutually fighting you on defense, then technically speaking, you get an unprovoked war, like an incursion, because they attacked you without being at war with you. And if you declare war on them, you're like automatically in the right. It treats it as if they declared war on you with like no justification whatsoever, which is stupid and I fucking hate it because it doesn't tell you when you get it. So I can't even show you how to get it. And the only other real direct way to make somebody like you is to go to the world events, find an event that happens. Oh, look, the USSR detonated an atomic bomb. The text doesn't mean anything. It's just flavor. This whole thing is just, oh, there's an event and that allows me to condemn okay or support okay doesn't do anything condemn makes them hate you support makes them like you you see how this can be handy for diplomacy and that's what this is for it has some other purposes technically in sphere diplomacy but i'll talk about when they talk about sphere diplomacy because somehow this tutorial is already longer than i ever imagined it would be another way to make somebody like you more is check you know do you have anything that's loyal so for example uh, Russia owns Dalian, which is loyal, as you could tell by the color, to me, to China. So if they wanted to, they could click on me, for example, there's a couple ways to do this, and release land loyal to this region. It would give it to me, and then that would make me like them more if I was an AI. Or they could go into the battle zone of the theater, release all unloyal land, that kind of thing would work too. In the world events, this is also where someone declaring war pops up, you can support or condemn it. You can automate this here, support wars by this region, condemn wars by this region. No opinion just means it will pop up here and then you will have to actually pick it yourself when it pops up. And if you've set third party relations in your game settings, then if somebody likes you, then their friends will like you too. And this is affecting everybody all the time. Which you can actually kind of see if you turn off the ownership filter here and instead turn on diplomatic relations, I can click the USSR and see, oh look, the Warsaw Pact really likes them. I, and you know, these countries like them. And there's some other countries that like them and you can see that the red ones hate them. Now, if I try to cozy up with the USSR, anyone that's green will start liking me a little more. Anyone that's red will start disliking me a little more. If I want to befriend the Soviet Union, then befriending countries that they are green with will help them like me more. It will play off of each other. But if I befriend someone that's red, it will actually make them like me a little less. But with so many nations in the world, depending on what setting you're playing, you can see how befriending one or two nations might not have the biggest effect. It's a small effect. But if you start doing this in mass, like if I befriended the whole Warsaw Pact, the USSR would really like that. That would make them like me more. It would help. It would be a nice little modifier. So you can play with diplomacy like that as well, or you can just turn off the third party relations altogether. Another helpful filter for diplomacy is to go to allies and enemies, and then you can click on someone, and then in green, all their allies will be highlighted. In red, all their wars will be highlighted, but there are not any wars current. No, it's a lie. North Vietnam, you can see they're at war with France. So it's all red, but they have no allies, so there's no green. So that's a helpful way to get an idea of somebody. Another way to see this kind of information is to, for example, click the Soviet Union, get them on your state tab, and then the second button from the bottom, you can see diplomatic relations. Open this up and then you can sort it. List of the region's allies, their enemies, and their colonies. Now, there's also two more filter buttons here, show exiled nations, so we can see that the Soviets are allied with a nation that doesn't exist. An exiled nation just means this nation's dead. It means it has loyal land somewhere in the world and it can come back if they're liberated and but they're just dead for right now they're allied with them which means that they would be allied if that nation came back into existence and you see slovakia and south ossetia as well is included in this and then you can also sort show colonies that kind of thing so if i click on the us for example uh if we show colonies we can see there's a lot it went from 12 to 101 because it's now it's including all the allies owned by all their allies so that can be a little confusing to look at 
And then you see they have colonies, so we can actually see their colonies under here. And then if we go to North Vietnam, we can do the same thing, but look at the enemies. We can see France turn on colonies. We can see every French colony involved as well. And then the only other real thing to show you, to teach you everything that you need to know about the basic mechanics of how diplomacy works in this game, is that there's just a few other things that you can trade. In addition to the resources, you can buy technology and you can give technology and that's a thing you can do. Not non-tradable technology, there is limitations to this. You can give and take designs in diplomatic exchanges, just like trading for resources, and it works the way I taught you how to do any trade. And actual military units. Now you'll see here that I can give them my units. These are my units in reserves, by the way. A unit must be in reserves to be traded. I can offer them my units, but I can't even see their units. That's because we don't have mutual defense. You actually need mutual defense with somebody in order to see this information. We did get mutual defense with Yugoslavia, so we can see what Yugoslavia has in reserves. We cannot see what they have deployed except by, you know, looking. And we can ask for and try to sell this to them. Although, this is a really finicky thing to try to do, because usually in the time it takes to make the treaty, either your AI or your trade partner's AI will have already taken one of the units out of reserve and if there's one unit missing then you will not actually be able to complete the trade so buying is a lot harder and better done in small chunks than selling when you want to sell or give units to someone you're better off just getting rid of all ai control stopping him from being able to reserve or deploy anything and then you could just do it in one big chunk but otherwise it's pretty useful and you can go from like zero units to 500 very easily depending on the era just buying units directly from them unfortunately it's only completed units there is no realistic way to say oh you have that design i would like to order this amount of these units from you can you sell them to me like it works in real life the units must be done or you must buy the design directly it's not realistic but it's how it works and that is it i didn't expect this tutorial to be that long and now i'm even more glad that i'm splitting the sphere stuff into a different tutorial i hope that this tutorial helped you guys if you have any questions or need any clarification on anything that i have explained here feel free to leave your question in the comments if you want to see a specific tutorial upcoming for this game please leave that in the comments as well if you would like to play some supreme ruler ultimate whether with us that you watch making our let's play series or with other community members look at the community server in the description below and you can find us and other supreme ruler ultimate players there and try to work out something in your schedule to see if you can get someone to play with this video is going to take me forever to edit and it's taken me forever to record much longer than the video actually is so if you would like to financially support me and help make more of these guides or whatever videos you want possible consider dropping a super thanks under the video especially under videos that you want to see more or become a patron which you can also find in the description below or a gilded server subscriber or a youtube channel member all of these except for youtube are two dollars a month only and you will get access to weekly shoutouts among other benefits i will end this video by putting up the names of the current supporters and for now thank you guys very much for watching and i'll see you on the next one